Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Jack Reaver Productions. Today I'm going to do a recap of yesterday's Saints versus Carolina game. But first, I'm going to play what I think of when I think of the NFL day today. I can't talk, sorry. Since I was a kid, this is the theme song that's the best. Of course, it's slow. Slow. There we go. Right there. Of course, this is... The 80s CBS intro. I used to get excited watching this with my dad. I loved it. This is the absolute best. Of course, we'd have Brent Musburger first. As you can see right there. A little glary. A little cross. Can't really see it too good. But that's, that's what epitomized the NFL for me today. And then they went to live from Pittsburgh. A Three River Stadium. I'm Brent Musburger. Blah blah blah. It's fantastic. Here we go. That's him. See? 1986. Saints versus the Giants. When the Giants won the Super Bowl. Outstanding team. Outstanding. You always like to say, looking live. That was Brent Musburger's little thing. Anyways, not that anybody cares about that because I know that they don't. I like it. Okay, recap of yesterday's game. Saints won this game 31 to 26. Drew Brees was outstanding in this game. I believe he threw three touchdown passes and over 300 yards. He looked like his old self, even though a lot of the season he didn't throw for a lot of touchdowns. They ran the ball with Alvin Kamara, I can't say that name right, and uh, Mark Ingram. The two of them probably combined for a good 150 yards total, maybe even a little more in this game. And this other guy, Thomas, that Matthew was talking about at 101 catches, I think Michael Thomas was outstanding in the game with a deep threat, getting behind the coverage. Etc. Um, Carolina hung in there. They fell behind. They made a little bit of a comeback at the end of the game, but Cam Newton made some really dumb plays at the end of the game. First one was he took an intentional grounding when he scrambled from the left and the right of the pocket, and then he threw the ball away towards nobody. He was still inside the pocket. It was intentional grounding. Him and Ron Rivera were pissed about it, but it was so obvious. If any novice could even see they were inside the two tackle boxes. That means intentional grounding. You just can't throw the ball. Then later on, on fourth down, he took a sack. He didn't even manage to get the ball off. It was unlike a guy who won MVP in 2015 that should have been able to get rid of the ball and did a better job on fourth down to give his team a chance to win. I give the Saints credit. Their defense played well when they had to. They gave up some big plays that could have cost them the game. Earlier in the game, they went for it on fourth and three from about the Carolina 45-yard line, which I thought was absolutely absurd. Pot the ball and make them to go the whole uh, length of the field. That's what Trey Aikman said, and I agreed with him. They went for it. Spree threw an interception down at about the 30-yard line, so they got a little bit of field position, but I thought it was crazy to do that. Sean Payton's lucky it didn't cost them the game, really. Um, but it turned out good for them. Next week, the Saints will be playing against the Panthers. Uh, no, Panthers. No, it's not that. They just played the Panthers, you dummy, John. They'll be playing at Minnesota, who had the second-best record in the NFC. Um, Minnesota was 13-3. Saints 11-5 would be an outstanding game. The second game in the NFC is the Atlanta Falcons at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles, unfortunately, lost Carson Wentz for the season in Game 13, I believe. Still led the league in touchdown passes with 33, which is amazing. I'll do a little bit of preview and predictions of those games later on in the week. Those are good matchups. In the AFC, they're not as good. Patriots are favored by 13 and a half over the Tennessee Titans, who had a huge upset over the Chiefs. And then Pittsburgh is favored by seven and a half over Jacksonville. I'd be shocked if Pittsburgh and New England don't face each other. In the NFC, any of those four teams could win those games. That's how close they are. I like the matchups in the NFC and the AFC. I love football. It'll be fun to watch, though, but those games, to me, shape up to not be as good. All right, thank you for watching. The NFL Today version of Jack Regal Productions. I appreciate it. Um, subscribe to Jack Regal Productions. I hope you do at some point. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful evening, day, or whenever you're watching this.